Coming up on this special edition of OU Nightly, we've compiled today's news along with some of our best works of fall 2011. A car accident on campus landed one person in the hospital. An Oklahoma City teacher is facing drug charges. And for everyone traveling, we'll have your full holiday weather forecast. Stay tuned for this and more tonight on OU Nightly. Good evening and welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Allison Harris. And I'm Sarah Fullerton. Norman police today identified the man found dead in southwest Norman yesterday. Family members called police after finding 80-year-old Claire Owen Pollard dead at his house on Barton Street. Police are not releasing the cause of death. They're continuing to investigate the death as suspicious due to evidence of a struggle that they discovered in the home. A driver struck a woman crossing the street last night on the OU campus. A woman in a motorized wheelchair was hit on the corner of Lindsay and Asp around 620. Although the injuries were not life-threatening, the victim was taken to OU Medical Center, according to OUPD Lieutenant Bruce Chan. The driver was cited for failing to yield to a pedestrian. Police say they are not sure the cause of the accident and are not releasing any names or ages. Well, a lot of people are going to be traveling today to see family and friends for Thanksgiving on Thursday. Absolutely. People will be headed all over the country. Lauren, what kind of weather can they be expecting? Well, right now, guys, they can expect some unfortunate rain delays out towards the east as well as our northeast. Check out all of that rain cover we have right there. And in fact, just in South Michigan, it's actually turned into snow. So on top of those cool temperatures as well as those rainy and snowy conditions, there are going to be some rain delays out towards this way. So if you are planning to travel that way, do expect there to be some possible delays. And also out towards the northwest around Seattle and Portland, if you do have family and travels will be taking you out there. There could be some more rain delays out there as well, guys. Full forecast coming up in just a bit. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Lauren. Protests and unrest in Egypt continue to grow stronger. OU Nightly's Aaron Cahill joins us in the News Center with more. Aaron? Thanks, Sarah. That's right. Hostility continues to grow in Egypt between protesters and security forces for the fourth straight day. Protesters have been participating in a million man sit in in Tahrir Square. Tensions are high. Protesters are hurling stones at police. Police have been responding with tear gas and rubber bullets. Over 30 have died as a result of the riots. And three American students studying in Egypt are in prison today for their participation in these Cairo riots. Egyptian officials say the students were arrested on the roof of a university building near Tahrir Square. Officials with American University in Cairo are investigating the arrest and working to free the students. No word if formal charges have been filed. And presidential candidates are gearing up for another Republican debate tonight. New figures show Newt Gingrich leading in the polls. It is the first time Gingrich has been in the lead position. Sarah, back to you. All right, thank you, Erin. An Oklahoma City high school teacher is charged with drug possession after meth was found in her purse at school. Douglas High School science teacher Christina Jackson was found by paramedics on a classroom floor incoherent. A paramedic was the one to find the methamphetamines. Jackson was taken to the hospital for treatment and released the next day. Oklahoma leaders recently applied for grant money for early childhood education. The state's grant application focuses on creating an entry exam for kindergartners and a better data system. The grant winners will receive funding from the $60 million Race to the Top Fund. Coming up after the break, we're taking a look back at one of our favorite in-studio visits when the founder and CEO of C-SPAN and this year's Gaylord Prize winner joined us on the show. Allison Harris has that interview next. Plus, it's a key ingredient in your holiday cornucopia and a favorite of Charlie Brown. We see how this year's record drought affects a favorite fall crop. Stay with us. Well, a few weeks ago, I was able to sit down with C-SPAN founder and CEO Brian Lamb after he was awarded the Gaylord Prize for Journalism Excellence. Lamb explained what sparked his initial passion to create C-SPAN. 
Well, this is going to sound a little strange to you, but in the beginning, I was pretty angry about what television wasn't doing. And when you're, it's funny, anger is not a way to live, but it's a way sometimes that creates a lot of passion. I didn't have any money. Uh, everybody said, oh, no one's going to watch that. So it was all of those things that factored in in the beginning. And I was just so sure that this was going to succeed. I just kept on going. I didn't know any better. What is the importance of C-SPAN being so simplistic? And will that ever change? We are using television. And we're lucky to be able to use television in a way that's really just information. So there's no time that we ever sit around and say, gee, if we do this program, we're going to get this many viewers. We get to approach every day and say, what is going on in the world of politics and government in Washington or outside of there that the public ought to at least have a chance to see? What hasn't been done, or what do you think that you could do to disseminate the information better? Give me some more time in everybody's day. There's not enough time. You know, if I start asking you what you do with your day, You'd say, well, I might have 10 minutes at night that I could watch C-SPAN. Uh, it's figuring out how to have more time at the time you need it. I think that C-SPAN is your greatest accomplishment, or what are you most passionate about? Is that the ultimate goal for you, or are there things that you still hope to accomplish? I don't think in terms of accomplishment. Um, <clears throat> C-SPAN uh, is an effort by a lot of people. We've had over 1,200 employees in our existence. We've had over 130 board members, <clears throat> we've had great friends, all of those people were necessary and the cable operators around. Liam also said that among all of his successes, being married is his greatest achievement. Coming up after the break is a story for all of you looking forward to pumpkin pie this Thanksgiving. We're taking a look back at how the drought affected pumpkin crops this season. Plus, Lauren is here with weather. All right, guys, here's a quick shot of the stadium. 43 degrees out there right now. I have my forecast coming up next, so stick around. Welcome back. Flying or driving, weather can have a big effect on holiday travel plans. Lauren, what can everyone heading out tonight and tomorrow expect? All right, guys, I'll get to that in just a second. But first, I want to go ahead and see how the numbers worked out today. We got pretty close to our normals. Normally, we're sitting around a temperature of 59 degrees. We're a little bit cooler than that, about 5 degrees shy. We only got up to 54 degrees. And our overnight lows, we didn't get all the way down to the average of 37. We hung right around 39 degrees. But we've been seeing that trend day after day. Fortunately, though, the next couple of days, we're going to be getting a little bit warmer, though. If we go on over to what you need to know for the next few days, this is what you can expect. We have seen this time after time. It's going to be those really cool and clear nights. Since there aren't any clouds in the sky, that's what's really going to be providing for those temperatures to get all the way down into the 30s and even the 40s in some locations around Oklahoma. It's going to be pretty windy for your Thanksgiving holiday with gusts all the way up to 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour in some places. And then right around the corner, there's actually a 50% chance of rain on your Friday. I'll have a little bit more of those details coming up in just a few minutes. If we move on over to our surface map, this is really the setup that we're going to be experiencing for the next few days. We have really clear, clear skies or high pressure is just dominating us out towards our west but on the other side of that out towards our west east is what I talked about just a little bit earlier plenty of rain this is what's going to be really providing for any travel complications for people for this Thanksgiving holiday just low pressure out towards our east and lots of rain in that in those places as well and even some snow up towards our north as those temperatures sink on down below freezing for our overnight lows the temperatures are not going to be too terrible but they can get all the way below freezing up towards our northwest expect a temperature of 36 degrees for here in Norman for tomorrow the temperatures are going to warm up quite nicely even all the way up to the 70s the temperatures are going to be warmer up towards our northwest because this is where we're going to have clear skies that will allow those temperatures to get even warmer compared to those down towards the southeast around McAllister, they're only going to get up to 65 degrees. Now for our day planner here in Norman, here's what you can expect. The winds are going to be very, very calm and the skies are going to be very clear. 39 degrees at 8 a.m., 
62 at noon and then 65 degrees. Notice how those winds are going to be shifting from the north to the south. This means our temperatures will be getting warm as the next few days unfold. On our five day forecast, we're going to see temperatures all the way up towards the 70s, 71 degrees for your Thanksgiving. It's going to be windy though, like I told you, 70 degrees as well on Friday. Where it's going to be a 50% chance of showers as we have our next front move on through. But notice not only does the front bring some possibilities for rain showers, but it is also going to be knocking down our temperatures. We're going from a high of 70 degrees on Friday to only a high of 55 on the next day. Ooh, all right. Thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Recent soaking rainstorms have eased Oklahoma's drought, but after a long, hot, dry summer, Oklahoma farmers are still suffering and crop yields are way down. Just a week before Halloween, OU Knightley's Aaron Woolley and Morgan Downing surveyed the impact on pumpkin growing in our area. Fall is here, which means it's time to pick out some pumpkins and begin carving. But after the drought and heat this summer, those in the pumpkin business are struggling. They're just a little smaller than last year, and the, unfortunately the price has gone up. Gone up by about twice as much as last year because of the shortage. If you look in here, there's not very many pumpkins. Right there's like two, three. There should be like almost solid pumpkins in here, and, there's, and they're, they're not very big. The drought affected all pumpkin growers in our state. We watered more than we've ever watered this year. And it just, it took every bit of it and it still didn't make near the production. When you head out to buy pumpkins this year, they were probably grown in another state. TG Farms has brought in twice as many pumpkins from out of state. We're finding more and more a little farther out from Colorado to New Mexico. Uh, I think we, um, a friend of mine found two semi-loads in Nebraska. Yeah, we're, we're going to make it through. It's not going to be a big problem. I mean, it was scary at first, but now it's kind of calmed down again, and, and everything's going great. To avoid getting a bad pumpkin, Todd says, make sure you shop sooner rather than later. Morgan Downing, OU Nightly. Last week, this story won second place for video news package at the South Central Broadcasting Society Conference. And our newscast also won. It took first place in the video news program category. Up next on OU Nightly, football games pack in the crowds here at OU. But what do, where do we pack all those Sooners rides? Josh Kopelman shows us how some students make big profits on football game days. So maybe you should scout out some parking for this weekend's big game. I said it, big game. All the previews straight ahead in sports.